The year is 1976. Elton John's Don't Go Breaking My Heart is topping the charts. Gerald Ford is in the White House, and a sleek, needle-nosed supersonic jet is getting ready to whisk passengers across the Atlantic at over 1,300 miles per hour, twice the speed of sound. It seems the age of supersonic travel has finally arrived, but fast forward to today and you'll notice something strange. After 50 years of remarkable aviation progress, the iconic Concorde is now a museum relic, and no new supersonic passenger jets have taken its place. So what happened to the dream of mainstream supersonic flight? The answer involves a complex mix of technological challenges, economic realities, and regulatory hurdles. But now, thanks to cutting-edge innovations and the bold vision of a new generation of aerospace entrepreneurs, the supersonic revolution may be poised for a comeback. Join us as we explore the fascinating history of supersonic passenger travel. From the Concorde's rise and fall to the promising developments at companies like Boom Technologies that are working to make high-speed flight more accessible, sustainable, and economically viable than ever before. First, let's rewind a bit. The year was 1947. As test pilot Chuck Yeager pushed his rocket-powered Bell X-1 aircraft past the speed of sound, he shattered more than just the sound barrier. He shattered the notion that supersonic flight was impossible. Over the next two decades, supersonic aviation rapidly progressed. The British-French Concorde and Soviet Tu-144 were locked in a race to be the first supersonic passenger jet. But only the Concorde made it into full commercial service revolutionizing air travel by transporting passengers between New York and London or Paris in less than three and a half hours and marking the beginning of the supersonic travel era. With its sleek, droop-nosed design, the Concorde looked like it flew in from the future. But it was also obscenely expensive to operate, guzzling fuel from its after-burning engines. A round-trip transatlantic ticket could set you back 15000 in today's dollars. So it remained a niche product for the wealthy jet set. The other big challenge was the window-rattling sonic booms the Concorde generated when it broke the sound barrier. This led to a total ban on overland supersonic flight in the U.S. in 1973, relegating the Concorde to overseas and coastal routes only. Meanwhile, the U.S. government was working on its own jumbo supersonic jet, the Boeing 2707. It was even bigger and faster than Concorde. But cost overruns, delays, and concerns about noise and pollution led Congress to cancel funding. The 2707 became a $1 billion boondoggle. The Concorde soldiered on for a few more decades, but tragedy struck in July 2000 when an Air France Concorde crashed shortly after takeoff from Paris, killing everyone on board. Demand for flights on the supersonic jet slumped after the accident. The Concorde was finally retired in 2003, bringing an end to the era of commercial supersonic travel. And that brings us to today. It's now been more than 20 years since a supersonic passenger jet last took to the skies. In the meantime, subsonic planes have gotten bigger, more efficient, and more high-tech, but no faster. The Concorde's cruising speed of Mach 2 remains the high watermark for commercial air travel. However, a big factor in the potential return of supersonic travel is simple technological progress. As amazing as the Concorde was for its time, imagine what's possible with today's vastly more powerful computer modeling, advanced materials like lightweight carbon fiber composites, and 50 years of additional research into supersonic flight dynamics. So if the technology is there, what's been holding us back? The answer lies in misguided regulations and a lack of vision. The ban on overland supersonic flight in the U.S., enacted in the 1970s, remains in place today, severely limiting the potential routes and markets for supersonic travel. And for years, there was little political will to revisit these rules or to invest in the development of new supersonic technologies. But now, a new generation of dreamers and entrepreneurs are picking up where the Concorde left off, determined to shatter the barriers to supersonic travel once again. Enter Boom, a company with a mission to make the world more accessible through supersonic travel. They're developing Overture to be launched by 2029, a sustainable supersonic airliner designed to carry 64 to 80 passengers that fly at Mach 1.7 
and cut overseas flight times in half with fares comparable to business class. But before Overture takes to the skies, Boom has already made history with the XB-1, the world's first independently developed supersonic jet. On March 22, 2024, the XB-1 completed its first flight at the Mojave Air and Spaceport in California, marking a major milestone in validating key technologies and innovations for Overture. The flight was a resounding success, and the ongoing testing of the XB-1 brings us one step closer to the return of commercial supersonic flight. Building upon the success of the XB-1, Boom is developing Overture, a revolutionary supersonic airliner prioritizing both economic viability and environmental sustainability. Overture is set to fly on up to 100% sustainable aviation fuel, thanks to Boom's partnership with Dimensional Energy and Air Company, which will provide 10 million gallons of net zero carbon sustainable aviation fuel per year. By closing the carbon loop, Boom is ensuring that supersonic travel can be achieved without compromising the environment. With over 600 profitable routes identified across the globe, Overture aims to make supersonic travel affordable and accessible to millions of passengers worldwide. Imagine being able to travel from Tokyo to Seattle in just four and a half hours, or from Boston to Paris and back home in time to tuck the kids into bed. The possibilities are endless, and the world is about to become a whole lot smaller. As we look to the future, it's clear that supersonic travel has the potential to revolutionize global travel and bring people closer together. The future of air travel is just around the corner, and it's time to get really excited about the possibilities. So, get ready to update your travel bucket list, because pretty soon, around the world in 80 days might just become around the world in 80 hours.